Hi, Nissim. Hey, what's up? What's up? Hi, how are you? I'm doing all right. All right. All right. So you are uh, tuned in to the Jewish Music Show. I am here with Nissim Black. It's DJ Matt. It worked out. Thank you so much for being here with me today. Nah, I appreciate it, man. It's all my pleasure. Pleasure's all mine. Amazing, amazing. So just a little bit about Nissim for those who are not as familiar, but you should be because I talk about Nissim all the time and I play his music all the time on my show. So Nissim Black is an African-American Hasidic Jew. He grew up in Seattle, Washington. His parents are both involved in the hip-hop music space, so music was always a big part of his life. From Islam to Christianity, eventually to Judaism, he's found his place, blended his religious identity and his love for music, and really made an impact through his mission and his reason for being in this world. He has songs such as Adored, A Million Years, Higher, Motherland Bounce, Fly Away, Change, Tagi, Toda, all these songs I've been playing for you during the past hour to get us excited. I play his music often on my show and I'm sure I know so many of you reached out and were super excited to hear from him today. He also did an interview with WICB and that was the radio station that I got involved with and started radio at my own college station and I reached out to Nissan's manager today and it's really such an honor to have you today on the show that's no, my honor man it's all me thank you thank you you're amazing, amazing. <laughs> you're live amazing. in from teaneck new jersey there's a lot of people listening and uh really awesome to have you live so i haven't been in teaneck in a long time no it's been a long time since i've been over there <laughs> oh we miss you not that i hang out too much over there but right. it's, you know one of those spots i've dropped into right looks like i'm gonna be in paramus for porn oh uh, very nice know. Very nice. Um, I go up to the Frisch Chavra over there. I love then, them. Uh, uh, one of my cousins, Annie, she went there. My cousin Joseph, he's a uh, student there. So that's that's awesome. Okay. I'm Paramus. Yes. Very yes. nice. Yes. Very nice. Yeah. yeah. And then during the day, I'll probably hang out in Muncie. But the truth Amazing. is, it's very hard because I'm going to be away from my family for Purim. Yeah. And like, yeah. we really went all out. Okay, I'm away for a lot of different Chagin, but this time I didn't know it was kind of like unexpected. Mm. And I just kept seeing the date and I was like, that date just looks like it's an important <laughs> day. Right. And so I finally checked and I said, that's Purim. And I, I, I was like, Aaron, you booked me for Purim. I'm gone. Like, you wow. know, I have to Zoom my family and see all the costumes that we, we got for the kids, you know. Before I got on with you, we were jamming out, we're playing all our Purim music, Amazing. And dancing with the lights <laughs> off, me and the kids. So uh. we're, we're, we're starting early. Right. Me and I've been playing a lot of those uh, songs and getting into the uh, spirit here on the show as well. So, and for those who aren't as familiar, Perm is an upcoming Jewish holiday. We entered the second month of Adar. It's a leap year on Friday, Thursday, and Friday was Rosh Chodesh. In the secular calendar, like, oh, it's March. Like, oh, it's wow, time flies. But in the Jewish calendar, like, when it's a new month, it's like a big deal. It's a way to have a new start. So, we have Perm coming up in just about a week and a half's time. And uh, that's awesome. You'll be here uh, in uh, Paramus in our neck of the woods. So, so, yeah, 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 I'll be on that yeah. Side. that's awesome. And you have six kids, seven kids. I have six kids. Six kids. Yes. Okay. As I was told one time by uh, a very well-known rapper and DJ Fat Man Scoop, he told me that it's a starting five and one coming off the bench. So, just <laughs> 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 keeping them basketball and not get to football, you know? Right. Oh, that's amazing. Thank your family for me for um, allowing them to give you to me for some time <laughs> and for uh, my listeners. So really, I know there's been so much up and down with the pandemic, but wait, and you're in Israel currently, right? Right. right I'm in, in Israel right now. I live okay. in Beit Shemesh. Beit Shemesh. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, amazing. Sure. What pandemic? I I know, right? It's like... <laughs> <laughs> in Israel, the down? pandemic only was like by neighborhood, right? right. And also too, right. like that probably in New York also. I'm pretty sure it was, right. but like right. it was only a pandemic if you lived in certain parts. Like even in Beit Shemesh, like if it was in Olive, there was a pandemic. If you were in Gimel, mm. there was no pandemic. There's no pandemic, <laughs> like, right. You know, Can make a math for it. Tra- <laughs> exactly. Like because I travel a lot, obviously, then there's, you know, everything, all the rules and everything. So then you realize, oh, yeah, the world's still going crazy about this stuff. But like, right. you know, you come back into a certain neighborhood, like... First week, everybody had it, and it was like, okay, everybody was like done after that. So it's been very, very hard. I had to tour during the pandemic. That was kind of tough. It was like tough and rewarding, like the experience of going from like playing in front of 2,000 people, and then mm. the next day in a different city, it's like you got 80 people. You got, like, you know, and then you got 1,500 people, and then you go to the next city. Okay, now we got like 100 people. <laughs> at venues that hold at least four, 500 people, and it's like, wow. And for the venue to say, like, man, this is the most people we've had in the 
long time, and you're just like, no way, this show's a dud, you know? But Baruch Hashem, and what's so beautiful about it was no matter how big the crowd, no matter how small, we were all in. Being on the stage, in the crowd, everybody was all in it, and every show felt like it was the Super Bowl halftime mm. show. Not this Super Bowl halftime show, but a different one where I will be actually performing. Right, 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 right. Did you like the Super Bowl this year? To be honest, I heard about the lineup. I did not really want these guys to win the Super Bowl. Hmm. The Rams. Even though I don't follow like I used to. Right. I'm from Seattle. These right. guys are in the same division. Right. It's right. LA. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. it's just way too close to home. I did not want to see the Rams win it. I was hoping that Cincinnati would have been able to pull it off. But, hmm. uh, you know, it is what it is. Now, the halftime show, I did not watch. I'll be hmm. very honest. Hmm. I did not watch the halftime show. I didn't even see totally the Super Bowl fair. itself. I was caught up by highlights. Mm. I have a good friend that makes sure that I see every single bit of it so they can rub it in my face. Uh, <laughs> even though I tell these guys I don't really follow as much as whatever, but as much as I can, you know, with the Bacham, I tell them, oh, Seahawks, Seahawks. I don't really know what's going on that much. I'm not a big football person. I say I watch for the commercials. I think that's the most interesting and fun <laughs> part. The game, I'm like, eh. The halftime show, like, you know, balancing what I choose to watch, being a religious Jew and what is interesting to me on TV. Okay. And also, I'm glad that they had black artists performing and I think that was really great. The thing that was amazing was it was during the day because it was in LA and they made it seem like it was at night. It was quite wow. amazing. Okay, so one question I have for you is on your website, in your bio, you said, after a long discovery process, both musically and personally, Black finally found his true identity. So can you elaborate a little bit more on that? As you'd mentioned Seattle to Beit Shemesh. I'd mentioned, you know, he went from Islam, Christianity, Judaism. I also know the interview up and close that you did, you know, a few years ago, you were talking about is rap kosher or not? And your answer was pretty much, it's really happy how you define it. It's the person, it's the vessel. And if you make yourself holy and spiritual and then you bring that into your music, that could be kosher. But if not, then rap could not be kosher. But really, your journey, what does that look like for you? It's a loaded question. Here's my most loaded answer I could give you. The truth is, I feel like there's always going to be room for self-discovery for a person spiritually, emotionally, mentally. You know, as you mentioned, musically, identity as an artist. Like, for instance, my first love, like I grew up listening to a lot of pop music. My parents played a lot of hip-hop, but I grew up off of old-school pop songs and Motown and Earth, Wind & Fire. At least for the first seven years of my life, I would say that I was very, very convinced that I was Michael Jackson. So nobody can tell me that I wasn't Mike. Broke a for the first seven years of my life. I'm happy I wasn't hanging around Michael Jackson, but at least right. I could say that I do believe that at some point you wouldn't have been able to tell me I wasn't Mike. I used to sleep with a dirty glove in my hand. I had the wow. moonwalk shoes, wow. and my moonwalk was a mean moonwalk. I'm so, it was serious. It was serious. <laughs> I'm I was sure. very, very into pop and different things like that. And as my parents grew, because I sort of grew up with them, my mother, my stepfather, and even my father, like as rap started to really come into the picture was much more like Tupac and Biggie and that whole thing was back and forth and then so rap sort of kind of taking itself but I was singing way before I was rapping really mm. and so the mm. rap sort of became the persona of doing more of like what was going on or what was culturally accepted in the neighborhood and different things like that it didn't mean anything to my mother was a rapper my father was a rapper my mother also had a nice voice as well so mm. I do a lot of digging you know mm. especially after I finish a project and the more and more I'm sitting with it and I'm thinking and it's a very spiritual process for me as well and I start digging am I being as getting back to the purest me as I possibly can and because of that you can go to my Spotify and just feel so many different moods and genres and styles of music yeah. and you know yeah. at, at one point that for some people may not like that but for me it's just sort of like it's, it's me always trying to find what's most authentic to me, you know? And to get to that place and be very, very strong about it. One of the biggest things is like when you're an entertainer, in a lot of different positions where you're today, these people call influencers. Everybody right. has an opinion for what's the best idea for you. And you're constantly being bombarded with suggestions and ideas and everybody's trying to sell you. And the closer that they are to you, the more and more inclined you are to listen sometimes. And sometimes it's hard for you to evaluate, especially when things feel so pressing, it's hard for you to sit back and evaluate the advice and really ask the questions to yourself, but is it me? Is it really me? Is it what I want to do? Authentic so, to you, yeah. You, know, you have those ups and downs. Specifically, for sure, you're going to have them in the world of art. Right. That's amazing that you've gone on that journey and not just, okay, I'm putting this song out and that song out and this and that, but your music has followed your journey and your music has followed 
you and what's true to you. And like you said, especially in this world right now and with social media and all these influences, like you mentioned, there's really like a box to fit in and to say, you know, this is me. This is who I am as an African-American Hasidic Jew. This is my identity. This is who I am. And bringing that mm-hmm. to the world and just the lyrics, the way that you speak about, you know, king of the world, that Hashem's the higher power, that change, you want to make change in the world, that there's history, there's meaning to the songs and lyrics. And I did acting growing up a lot. And one of the biggest reasons I didn't get maybe big parts is because maybe when I was singing, I just sort of sang to make sure that like I was reaching the notes. But did I really have meaning and like that, like right. essence of like the meaning of the song and what the character was saying or what the artist was singing? I don't know. And as I grew older and became more mature, I realized, oh, there's like meaning to this. Just as I say lines when I'm acting, there's also <laughs> right. singing. And that comes to you, which is amazing. So I'm really interested in what was it like when you sort of reached that moment where you're like, wow, like what I'm doing is making a difference or wow, like people are actually realizing who you are. I know that you had mentioned in a previous interview also that when you came to New York as you were sort of trying to get a label and trying to get a record that there were all these rappers that knew who you were already. So was it that or was there another moment in your career where you were like, wow, like people know who I am or like, wow, like my song's being played on this you know place or that place or I see my CD in the store. Like maybe there are many, maybe there's not an exact one, but you know, what is it like being in your shoes where you're delivering this message to the world and you're bringing this music and inspiration to the world where you're like, wow, like people understand what I'm doing. Pe- people realize the impact. Right. That's a very good question. I think, you know, there's been moments where I realize it, but this most previous tour that I did, my Bright Lights tour, which started just before Hanukkah that went through Hanukkah and like two, three weeks after, I would say like this. The first thing is that most artists are very, very aware and others are not as aware, but they are aware, but they're not, maybe not as aware as as where others are not cognizant, but there is a certain cognizance that comes in of what you're doing to the listener when you're writing or creating music. Most people Mm -hmm. understand what they did. Like, I can understand the emotions that I'm trying to convey, right? Right. So, like, you were just talking about making lines in a play, right? So, for me, the first thing I do is I'm trying to create the emotion. Before I even think about what I'm going to say on a song, I always think about how I'm going to say it. What's the cadence? What's the note? And what's going to make it more impactful? Because if I say it at this time when that snare hits, there's a certain <laughs> snare that hits. And if, if I say it at that time, I know what that's going to do to somebody's kishkas. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, so you kind of, yeah. you have to be very, very aware to have, I feel like, a, a emotional impact on people. Mm. So then you start to say, like, you know, I said this very often also is that, you know, if you have three minutes of somebody's undivided attention, and music, especially in the spiritual world, but for sure is the most powerful tool that there is. I would say people nod their head when they're listening to music, which in a sense, nodding the head is generally a sign of agreeing, that I'm agreeing with the person who I'm listening to. Right. It's a certain, it's going in whether the person thinks that it's going in or it's not going in, but it's going in. Yeah. So the person has a very, very important role in making sure that whatever is going into that person, not only is it coming from the heart, not only is it sincere, all those things are given, but what's going to be the impact? Mm -hmm. What's going to be the impact on that person Mm -hmm. when they hear it? So you Mm -hmm. have to be very, very cognizant of that, right? So for me, in terms of what I started to do, especially after I had corona, I was in the hospital, I was very sick. It wasn't as scary as what they were writing in the news. It got completely fabricated by the news. But I will say that there were times for me, I was very scared and I was mm-hmm. very worried. And I had a lot of time, like, just really to reflect, yeah. you know, and to really think about it. And I think I started thinking about my audience, which is really honestly something I never thought about. The moment I started making music again or Jewish music, I wouldn't think about the audience as opposed to, like, I was just thinking about, like, listen, this is what I feel like. This is my God given talent. This is what I'm supposed to do. I'm just going right. for it. And I was always surprised about who was listening to me and who wasn't listening to me. I was yeah. always very surprised by that. But then I started thinking about, like, but what do I want? What type of impact do I mm-hmm. want to make? So I finished out. I put out a lot of records, things that I had in the can, and I f- sort of felt like spent a lot of time in meditation, I got back to myself. You know, I really mm-hmm. got back to what I wanted to do and be able to make the impact that I wanted to. And going out on tour and seeing it make that impact is crazy. It's crazy to hear like the stories from people and what people were wrestling with because that's everything I intended to do. I wanted to pull a person from that place. I wanted to be able to give a person that specific physic or to give them the words. A lot of people are bottled up. There's things that they want to pray about, but they don't have the words. But I had those words because I was praying about the same thing. So whatever it is to be able to give a person 
just an inspiration. I was going through uh, TSA, and there was this very, very sweet black lady who was working for, not for the TSA, I was going through Clear. I have Clear. And I went to go give my ID so I can hurry up and beat the rest of the line, you know, right. as this uh, so-called privileged people think we have. <laughs> so I give my thing, and I'm waiting for her to, like, do the whole machine thing or whatever, and she just stops. And I'm like, what just happened? Like, what she goes, I know who you are. <laughs> I'm like, I'm thinking maybe she grew up with my mom. I don't know what the story is. You know what I'm saying? Like, I had to be, like, a little bit younger than my mom's age or something like that. And she said, your music is so inspirational. Mm. It's so, like, beautiful. I play for my kids and whatever. You know, she's not Jewish. We're having a lot of people that were coming. I mean, the rabbi, it was in Dallas, you know, and we did this concert. It was like, man, there was a lot of non-Jews that registered for this. So you see that it's not about where a person is in terms of, what the religion is is an overall theme that people want to be uplifted mm -hmm. they're trying to get to a place mm -hmm. so once you start to become cognizant of it you're like hold on i need to make music that by design is going to get people to that place that makes so much sense and there was so much that was so powerful and thank you for that but right that you see there's a human being here despite their characteristics despite their faith despite their characteristics who they are there's a person there and the impact you can make and that Hashem place you here and you have that impact on all human beings because there's a heart and there's a soul and there's meaning and that you think that life is so busy and there's so much going on and that like you said whether it was COVID when you had more time or whenever and you just have some time to think about what is this impact really going to be that's powerful and not just you know I'm doing this just you know for the money just for the career just for the platform but really to make this world a little bit better than I left it and have that impact is amazing so thank you for that what I'm curious about now is what is it like making a music video and what goes into all the planning what goes into how do you find <laughs> I know you had posted on Facebook I think a few days ago I think it was about the change video where you had said you know you know it's the 200th <laughs> shot when all these kids are like laughing and you just posted that on Facebook and I was like ah oh, I can't imagine <laughs> what is it like yes. making that's music the, video. You know, that was a very interesting post because the truth is, is that it's so awesome to be able to create the most dynamic and awesome film, you yeah. know, really, the music videos. But for me, it's like these are my little movies, you mm. know what I mean, that yeah. that are really just the visuals of this record and, and is going to, you know, sell the story a little bit more than what just listening to it, the audio. For me, I really direct most of all my videos. I co-directed mm. with Jakob Citron. Now we've been doing a lot of videos together and we have a lot more. And I have even two on the back burner that have not been released yet. Yeah. I can't wait to release them. So I'm very, very involved from the creation aspect. I get very very involved in that so the gift and the curse of like when you are trying to tell a story or different things like that the gift of it is that you have the people it's just much better when you have so much of a storyline and there's different people but it's not as easy as when you're by yourself you know yeah. there's nobody else inside of the clip <laughs> and you do it but the <laughs> tough part is is that you know like i said since I'm, I'm overseeing everything i can only really see the screen right before i do the shot now usually mm -hmm. i have a monitor or something like that and i'm watching every scene and i'm whatever saying from the back or giving my suggestions but when it's just you, you can't really watch yourself while you're doing it. So yeah. sort of like both of them have their pluses and the minuses. But they generally are very long days. Most of our normal shoots end up being anywhere from like 12 to 14 hours mm -hmm. in a day. Mm -hmm. But we knock yeah. out the whole entire thing. We try to make sure we get all the locations. Right. And with Citron Films, it's been a really good crew. I really, really enjoy working with him. And even, you know, when I was doing stuff with Leroy Nafuta also, like mm -hmm. I've really, really enjoyed doing stuff specifically here in Israel. You know, because yeah. I'm gone for everything else. I got to go tour all the time. I have, you know, what to do in appearances or whatever I have to make all the time in America or wherever else. But to be able to, like, shoot my clips here and show people other places in Israel, like yeah. so many people are like, you shot that in Israel? Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's really awesome that, right. And people are like, wow, that's Israel? Like, if I've been there only twice when you get to see some of the, like, the essence of it and the negative and, you know, even just by a lot and over there and just beautiful, right. beautiful, 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 right. beautiful, right. beautiful. That's awesome. So even though I teach right now, I was actually a communications major and we did a lot of films in studio, but also field videos. And we had to book places and get consents of people and go through the legality of it and, and wow. create sheets and diagrams and nothing compared to the uh, extremity that, you know, people like you and musicians that someone like you, Nissim, that make this impact. But there's a lot of work, but it's amazing. and Doing our work, doing yes. our job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, I have uh, one last question for you, and this is really for my listeners. How can my listeners listen to you, connect, really, and most importantly, support your work and everything that you're doing? It's amazing. Definitely, you go to the Spotify and type in Nissim Black, 
back yeah. and just stay on there. We actually haven't even promoted it yet. We just put together a brand new playlist on Spotify, mm -hmm. my own playlist called Nissan Black <laughs> Inspirational. That is like going to be probably the most updated because it has a lot of the new records as they come on. That's like where we're putting it out so people don't miss anything. Everything's automatically going into that new playlist. And we sort of like divided up the sounds, more of the like hip hop stuff that people wanted, like even more of the more modern hip hop stuff, the Motherland Bounce flavor, the best. Yeah. Like those records we have in the Nissim 2020 and Beyond playlist. And then I have a playlist that just like straight up like inspiration. And I think they're both inspirational, but it just depends on sort of how bad you want your trunk rattling when you're listening to the music. Uh, so <laughs> definitely Spotify, Apple Music. My IG is at Nissim Official. And on Twitter, I'm Nissim Black. And YouTube, YouTube is like my biggest thing, right? Right now, I'm probably gonna probably start seeing a whole lot more. I have the the podcast also that I've been doing up until now, yeah. which I think right now we're gonna be rebranding the deal. Mm -hmm. And on YouTube, you're gonna be catching a whole lot of content. Like I've been really focusing myself on the visual aspects of things, so yeah. you're gonna start seeing a lot of content on the YouTube, and that's youtubecom backslash world and you can enter into my world. It's gonna be a lot of new visuals coming there. Both music videos and non-music videos. Amazing. And I saw you just put out a music video a few days ago, so on YouTube. Yeah. So that was uh, <laughs> amazing. And my listeners, you should uh, definitely check Nissan out. He's just the way he's talking to me and his and his care and his respect for, you know, making an impact. It really says a lot about who he is and his care to allow music to be influential and to make a career that's meaningful and great and wonderful. And what better a person to have on the show today. Thank you so much for being on and for, uh, you know, you. making this time. So I really, Thank truly you, appreciate man. it. I really appreciate it, Matt. Keep going going keep going thank you strength to strength thank you guys thank so you. much man same bracha to you thank you for all my listeners who tuned in